psychedelics and early Christianity was a big find for me. And the more I dug, the more obvious it became that an entire portion of early Christianity has been intentionally deleted, especially when it comes to the use of psychoactive substances as sacraments. Now, this happened early in the history of religious systems. In the 1990s, we saw a new breed of researcher emerging, approaching ancient texts from a completely different perspective than virtually every other biblical scholar in history had done. They didn't go at it with a shovel in one hand and a Bible in the other. They were open-minded, and they discovered that spirituality that eventually became Christianity likely came from psychedelic experiences, deeply rooted in astrology and mysticism. One of the most unexpected advocates for this hypothesis can be found in a person the Catholic Church hired to translate the discovered set of lost gospels called the Nagamati Library, as well as to translate the Dead Sea Scrolls. He's a scholar known for his skills in translating sacred texts. His name is John Allegro. Unfortunately for the church, when translating the Dead Sea Scrolls, he found that there were more than ample evidence of the use of hallucinogenic mushrooms in early Christianity. He went on to write two books on his very articulate research, books that should have turned religion upside down. Now instead, the church chose to disgrace him and block his translations from the public reinterpreting the Gospels in a way that was vastly more in alignment with the religion they need Christianity to be. Now let me weave a curious little tale, constructed from factual evidence in relation to John of Patmos and his incredible book in the New Testament known as Revelation. The meaning of Revelation is fiercely disputed. Some say it spells out the Apocalypse and others think that it is simply a deeply symbolic representation of the struggle between good and evil. Apocalyptic literature was a fairly common form in the first century, and many academics believe that John was writing specifically to reassure the Christians of Asia who were being persecuted, and perhaps to pass them clandestine messages. Others believe that part of it or a retelling of the Greek mythological stories of a champion fighting a monster, which was John's way of allowing as many as possible, especially new converts to Christianity, to identify with his vision. In the parallel mythological story, the pregnant goddess Leto is pursued by the dragon Python. She escapes to an island where she gives birth to Apollo, who later kills the dragon. That idea seems as viable as any of the other theories of its meaning and interpretations. Now, with that in mind, let's now read it from the perspective that is the result of the vision induced by a trance state. So I turned to see whose voice it was that spoke to me. And on turning, I saw seven golden lampstands, and in the midst of the lampstands, I saw one like the Son of Man, clothed with a long robe and with a golden sash across his chest. His head and his hair were white as wool, white as snow. His eyes were like a flame of fire, and his feet were like burnished bronze, refined as if in a furnace. And his voice was like the sound of many waters. And in his right hand he held seven stars, and from his mouth came a sharp two-edged sword. And his face was like the sun shining with full force. Now when I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead. But he placed his right hand on me, saying, Do not be afraid. For I am the first and the last, I am the living one. I was dead, and see, I am alive forever and ever. I have the keys of death and of Hades. Now write what you have seen, what is and what is to take place after this. Now it might seem like a wild speculation, perhaps even blasphemous to many, that this possibility of John's vision was a result of an altered state of consciousness actually has facts to support this line of thinking and the conclusions that might be drawn from it. You see, Patmos is a small Greek island in the Aegean Sea. A cave on that island is the exact location in which John is said to have had his visions that allowed him to write Revelation. That location is so universally agreed upon, it is now an historic center known as the Cave of the Apocalypse. Another gullible tourist trap. When Alcatraz quit being a prison, became a tourist trap. <laughs> so Pat Mo said, we've been doing the same stuff over and over. Forever. 
But we know where it is. We agree that this is the cave. Yeah, we know where it is. Yeah. Caves also happen to be at the center of the debate in the archaeological community because several of world-renowned archaeologists who have put forth a controversial theory that caves are where some humans' earliest thoughts in relation to gods and spirituality were born. There was a sudden leap in our mutual evolution sometime around 32,000 years ago, coinciding with the appearance of strange paintings deep inside caves in France and in Spain. A number of these paintings depicted half-animal, half-human creatures, unusual scenes that did not correlate to daily events, as well as spirals and other geometric patterns that have been since classified as classic stages of an altered state of consciousness known as a trance state. By the very nature, caves are conducive to altered states of consciousness. The darkness and isolation are a perfect recipe for sensory deprivation. A psychedelic plant known as morning glory is a part of the flora of Patmos. All it takes is speaking to a local shaman, or simply looking into artwork from our early cultures, such as the Mayans and the Aztecs, to see that morning glory was indeed a key part of shamanic ritual. Also near the island of Patmos is the island of Kos. It has been widely publicized that Kos has several species of psychedelic mushrooms. Road trip. It's thought that since Kos and Patmos are part of the same island chain, there is a chance that the same psychedelic mushrooms were available on Patmos as well. Now even though attempts were made to rid most of them by the ruling elite very early on, there are still many scattered pieces of evidence, if you just look. Countless temples have clear depictions of psychedelic mushrooms, including frescoes of Amanita Muscara in a few early Christian churches. They are not always decorative. They are singled out from other elements by being pictures in a basket, which is a clear indication that they were to be ingested. I know it's wild speculation, but let's see if it would even have been possible for John to be experiencing a trance state that is common feature to almost every mystical and religious system on the planet. Was anything that would reach altered states of consciousness available to John on Patmos? The answer to that question is not only a resounding yes, but there is more likely than just one possibility in relation to how this trance state could have been arrived. Remember the natural structure of the features of the environment John wrote Revelation in. Oddly enough, because of the imagery within Revelation is so vivid, more than one scholar has suggested the structure of the cave in which John received his visions may have had more than a minor impact on his state of mind. Many theories surrounding Paleolithic cave art suggest that the cave itself, the lighting, sound echoes, and so forth, would assist ancient shamans, priests, and practitioners in entering trance and creating art, while also communicating with the rock walls. And indeed, John was said to have received his revelations from a triple fissure in the rock, huh, where he was spoken to by his divine being. Since John seemed to dictate from a spot within close vicinity of fissures in the rock of the cave, perhaps he was inhaling some combinations of gas which permitted him to enter a trance and receive his visions. There are many possibilities because John's passage also contains all of the salient features of an ayahuasca experience. Now the being he sees is bright and his eyes are like a flame of fire. When John sees him, he falls to his knees as though dead. It could be possible that John of Patmos was consuming a brew. Acacia in Paganium Harmala would have been present on Patmos at the time of this writing, and if this mixture was a holy sacrament, John may well have known of it. Now furthermore, wormwood was a sacred plant of the goddess Artemis, and had been used in sacred rituals to her as a sacrament for many hundreds of years on the island of Patmos, which was her sacred island. The plant is said to cause hallucinations when consumed as well as a visual brightening of everything, which corresponds to the constant light and the fire imagery found in Revelation. Wormwood is even specifically discussed in Revelation. The third angel blew his trumpet, and a great star fell from heaven, blazing like a torch, and it fell on a third of the rivers and on the springs of the water. The name of the star is Wormwood. 
A third of the waters became wormwood, and many died from the water because it was made bitter. Wormwood, like many psychedelics, can be poisonous at high doses and can cause great physical distress when consumed. The imagery in Revelation, as well as the imagery of several other parts of the Bible, seem to indicate a significant role of psychedelics in the visionary portions. We'll finish with a quote from George Bernard Shaw. He once mentioned that Revelation was a curious record of the visions of a drug addict. Now, whether or not he was making a joke, we don't know. But some have taken his idea, this idea, quite seriously. <laughs>